Well, thank you very much to follow a next wave speaker series. As you know, because of pandemic, we could not run our normal face-to-face -face large audience communication. But in some ways, actually the way we're communicating today, we can reach even broader global audience because it is available, it's in the cloud, and we can reach you. I'm so glad we also have a spectacular speaker that has joined me from large CEO of companies like VMware and ARM, all the way to startup companies that are changing the world. And in between, we also have enablers like venture capitalists and others that are trying to help these companies to scale. So we want to hear a diverse view of how we are trying to change in a technology companies that are making our lives better, whether it's an AI technology, whether it's a data-driven companies that are changing the insurance market or health market, all the way to changing fundamental core technologies with the quantum compute. So uh, keep listening to us. I'm happy and delighted that I can be able to share these great ideas with you going forward. There is a transition coming though. Over the last little while, we've seen massive improvements in the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, and we look at the next generation of computing being a combination of, of classical computing and AI-driven computing where data uh, is being used to make decisions and being used to make decisions in an autonomous way through algorithms that are effectively using machine learning and AI techniques to, to extract information and, and look for patterns within that data. So I, I think the nature of computing is changing. We've been uh, uh, studying that, we've been uh, expanding our own products to um, provide machine learning accelerators, to provide software frameworks to allow applications to be built. I think the next 15 years will go into the exact opposite direction and it will be the decade of the content producers. The customer wants it. Fake news, certain developments of data manipulation, political scandals, populism, auto, the rise of autocratic systems based on false information and propaganda. That all shows mm -hmm. how important it is to have trustful sources. Exoskeletons, this is what we do. So we want to support the humans where they have some weak points. And actually, most of the humans on this planet sooner or later get some back problems because of heavy lifting or other um, uh, related issues. Mm -hmm. And we are having an exoskeleton which actually helps people to reduce the, the pressure on the, on the back. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do with our Cray X exoskeleton device. We, as the tech community, need to be constantly seeking how do we bend that arc of technology and every day make it more good. We must be shaping technology as a force for good every day. And I believe we need to be building that into our organizations. We need to say, how do we reduce the carbon footprint? How do we handle privacy for the individual? And how do we participate in the policy debates to best govern? the trade-offs of the direction of technology, the needs of the people, and the business requirements at the same time. If you look at products today, there are two types of products. One, one family of product is very, very sophisticated from a technological point of view, but low accuracy means they can fail often and it's fine, like, you know, a PC, like a smartphone. The second family of products are not such that they're not that they're not so much sophisticated, but very very but very accurate. It means they, they they fail rarely. And an aircraft, an airplane, is an example of such a of such a product. Now you know, the tolerance for failure is is basically zero. Autonomous driving is both. You have to be very very sophisticated. We're talking about cutting edge silicon, cutting edge software, cutting edge data driven algorithms, cutting edge AI, so very, very sophisticated, but on the other hand, very, very accurate. The tolerance for failure is, is, is almost uh, zero. And then this is where, where the, the conundrum, this is where the big challenge uh, is. And progressively we move from uh, not only uh, being different, but celebrating the differences of our people, not only respecting them for who they are, their inclination, 
their color of skin, their cultures, uh, their religion, but also uh, operating in a country and being a, a, a player in that country, which recognize all the differences of that country from another one and being extremely respectful of those differences. And uh, this has created a corpus of values which is uh, making us uh, a very strong company. In a world where, contrary to Samsung, where when you create a product, you have a physical product. We, we don't create a product. Uh, and our product is imagination, creativity, is about intelligence. And all this is something which is uh, intangible. And uh, honestly, this has really set up a, a part from the competition and uh, created human values which are paramount to our people. Insurance is based on data. Right. And what we believe is that um, what we can contribute to is turning insurance into a really engaging product, mm -hmm. into a product that people love um, and that provides real safety. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what we see is that based on contextual data, so mm -hmm knowing much more about customers in real time, mm -hmm. we can understand what is their risk right now mm -hmm. and we can also help them reduce the risk that they're exposed right now to prevent mm -hmm. something bad from happening. So we're talking about food waste and food waste solution. And we all know it's, it's not just a local problem, it's mm -hmm. a global problem, mm -hmm. uh, like it, it happens anywhere in the world mm -hmm. yeah and as you correctly pointed out it's it's you know it simply explained it's you know like um, an over capacity of food which does not find the right demand mm -hmm. on time yeah because food is perishable so you know timing is, is an important factor you know, to say like how can i redistribute this oversupply very quickly into the right channels It's very long. It's very long to, to get to a drug, uh, to a treatment. It's very long and it's, uh, it's uh, also complex or let's say sophisticated. So not only you need people with know-how, but we need, and it's, we need to bring this technology. And I think it has the positive things of COVID crisis is that we, we, it is accelerating to use these tools and this technology to, to, to do it better, optimizing and accelerating. You're enabling anybody that are out there to enable banking as a service capability. So tell us about the disruption that are going on and how you're enabling these companies to become a, what I call customer-centric services that are far better than what could be done without having your service. From a Solaris perspective, we call that contextual finance. And, and that basically means that you bring the financial service into the context of a bigger solution. And, and the driver, again, of that solution is a change in consumer behavior. The key objective of Solaris is to provide an infrastructure that allows the seamless integration of financial solutions into other ecosystems. And, and what drives us is, of course, we want to have the best product at the best price with the best service. I hope that we really become that, that we take advantage of all those efficiencies and, and, and you know, advances in technology and actually get back to becoming human and having that human connectivity. Because here at Factory Berlin, we've been operating through, through the pandemic at a you know, reduced capacity, of course, and then starting to scale uh, as we can because we have seen that our community members, especially the, you know, the freelancers and the, the early stage startups that need this environment, the so-called third space, you know, not, not the home environment, not the workplace, but this type of ecosystem and network where you feed off of each other and where serendipity takes place, you know, the, the effect of having the water cooler conversation, which you can't have when right. you're on an, a, a video call. And so we've seen our community 
you know, want to flock back to, to the space because they, they feel that need to have the human interaction because actually, you know, some things just happen serendipitously or co-creation happens when you have the, the room for, for, that, uh, for that invention.